Today, we're going to learn how to build an AI chatbot that is powered by your company's custom data. That means that the chatbot is going to interact with internal users in your company over whatever your communication tool is. Today, we're going to demonstrate Slack, but you could do it with whatever you want. And whatever that data backing is, you're going to be able to let the chatbot retrieve that data and have human level answers to people based on that data. I recently released a video that explains how to save your custom data into a vector database. So if you want to follow along with this entire video, go back and watch that one, which will show you how to set everything up. In the last video, we left off with you showing your boss how awesome this vector database was that you built. And he was super excited and he walks off happily and you relax for about an hour. And then suddenly you see him coming back towards you. And he's got a big grin on his face and he says, I love what you did. And I love it so much that I have invited the entire board to show them our internal chatbot that we're going to build based on this vector database. The meeting's at 4 p.m. Can you have it ready by then? So you sit at your desk in stunned silence, realizing you only got a few hours before this meeting with the board. You're either going to look really stupid or you're going to impress them a lot. So you, you do what you always do with technology and you start to think, what do I have and what's the end result that I need? Every time you deal with a technology problem, that's what you should be thinking. What do I already have and what do I need? What you already have is a vector database that you're properly chunking information to. What you need as a result, you want to be able to demo to the board, you typing into some kind of program and then asking a question about this company SOP. You want those results to then blow them away with how they come back. You know in two hours you don't have time to write your own software, even if, if you know how to do that. So you're going to have to use some kind of chat software that's already out there. Your company already uses Slack in this case. So let's use that. You know that you can probably hook into that with make.com or some kind of automations. So you have a chatbot now, that's going to be the place where you trigger into, but you have to do a couple more things. You've got to figure out how to get these messages back. And then you also have to figure out how to summarize the results so that they look like a normal chatbot response. Let's jump in very quick. This initial setup with Slack and make.com is a bit weird. So I'm going to describe it. You need to go set up a webhook. And that webhook is going to have a URL that you'll then come and you'll put it here into the request URL in event subscriptions in your Slack, um, your Slack API. And there's something specific here. Slack says, hey, you've got to tell us the content type. It can be text plain. It could be any of these ones. And then what you have to do here is we're going to, you need to make sure that you know the data structure if you don't have it. Uh, clearly determined, you can click read determined, and then you're going to create a webhook response and you're going to, this is a throwaway. This is just to get approved in Slack. 200 is what you want. The body, you need to put the challenge in there. That's why you need to know the data structure. And then the key is you have to go to add custom headers. So you have to do advanced settings, content type, text plane, save. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go copy address to clipboard. Then I'll put it in my request URL. And it verified it because now I'm sending back what they want. So Slack is now set up and we can discard some of the throwaway work that we did here. Next, we need to take the text that's coming into that Slack message and we need to turn it into a vector. That vector is just a long string of numbers in multi-dimensional space. And we're going to compare it for closeness with all those other chunks of text that we saved in the previous video. To get this vector, we take the text that came into Slack and then we give it to OpenAI. And unfortunately, make.com doesn't have a way to do this without calling the API. So it's a little bit messy here. We have to specify v1 slash embeddings. We have to make sure that it's a post type. And then there's this body text that goes in here. I'll put those in the description below the video so that you can follow along. But once you have these, you then click save. And what that does is it takes that text and it turns it into a vector that can then be compared with the other items in the database. 
I'm going to show you a quick make.com trick. This is all because we're having to use the make API module, which means that we don't get to know the data structure when it comes back. What we do in this case is we can click run once. It's going to run through here and it'll error because I haven't finished setting this up. But then when I click this open, you'll see that if I click into value one, now I can look at the data structure that came back. I wouldn't be able to do this unless I'd actually run a real run because uh, it doesn't know the data structure until it gets some real data. One other gotcha here, you've got to click map because you want to just pass the entire embedding array. So this, I'm not going to try to explain too deeply here. It's just more of a make.com thing. We just want to take the entire vector array and pass that into the query. We'll then save this and we'll try it. And this time you see, we got a result. So we came in and we got 10 bundles in the output. So it went in and got all the closest vectors that it could find. Really, we don't want probably 10. This is the number of search results that you care about. And we don't want to give too many because some of them are going to stop being relevant. So let's say we'll start with re as our new limit. We want to have a lookup of each of these results first. So we did a query of the vectors and you'll see that we got these three bundles with each of the vector IDs. We added a pinecone get a vector module and that says each time that we get one of these vector IDs, go look up what's there. So let's look at the first one. We looked up the vector ID, we found it. The values is all those crazy vector numbers. This is the multi-dimensional space that we talked about in the last video. The key that we care about is this metadata. And the metadata is the original text. So this original text is what we want to bring back. Now, our problem is that we have different outputs. So there are three different operations. So we have original text 11, three, and we need to combine these into a single result. Don't get overwhelmed by all that we're doing here. We just need one more thing. Eventually, I'm sure Pinecone will create some kind of tool that goes into make.com that does all this work for us. For now, we've got to do this manually, but hey, it helps you learn. So we need to create this text aggregator. We've got the querying of the vectors, then we take the top three vectors, and then we need to bring that down into that single result we talked about. And in this case, we say we have to set a source module. So we say, hey, we started diverging onto multiple branches in this pinecone query module. So now we're going to want to bring this back into a single result. We're going to have a row separator and you can choose different things, new row tab, et cetera. I choose other and I specifically put answer separator. This is because this text is easy for a large language model to parse, which is the last thing we're going to do. Once we get this big string of text, we're going to say, hey, here are the three answers and they're separated by this answer separator. Then the only thing we have to do is come in here to text and we say metadata original text, which means in the get a vector for each one of these, we're going to grab the original text. We can see that right here, farm infrastructure and biosecurity. We save this and then we run it. So you'll hit run once and then we'll open Slack. We'll say, Tell me about barn security. Let's look at how this collapses down now. So we have the output of get a vector and it's got each of these operations happening and each one has a metadata. We asked about barn security and you look, we've got something about barns here. Number two, we've got metadata and we have things about safety and protective clothing. These are things related to security. I don't see anything related to barns. So it's getting many aspects of our query. And then operation three, it combines some more of those. And so we talk about barns down here. We talk about fire response, which could be similar to security. The key to understand here is that vector databases are not making any logical decisions. They're not going, well, I think if this was the case, then maybe I should say this. They're just looking up closeness in multi-dimensional space. That's it. Now, it, because of how many dimensions we have, these can get scary accurate, but they're just picking out those chunks of data and sending them back. Don't get confused by that. 
That's why we need the next step. And the next step is a large language model. So we're going to take these results and we're going to pass them back into OpenAI, into ChatGPT. And so you can see here in tools, we now have got this output here, which has a single bundle and all this text. So this text is what we're going to pass into ChatGPT. And these now we have these nice answer separators that keep the answer separate so ChatGPT can see that these are different pieces and it will do a little bit of logical reasoning to put these together into an answer that looks like the chatbot knows what it's talking about. We're almost there. We just need to summarize those results. We do this with a ChatGPT module, the create a completion prompt. I'm using GPT 4.0. And then I'm giving it, I like to give it a developer system role for the first message. I think this helps to guide the direction of the responses. And so they'll stay within the, the confines of what I'm okay with as a chatbot. So I say you're an internal company, SOP docs assistant that summarizes answers. You could leave this off, but I, I think you'll get better overall consistency in your responses. And then your second message is the important one. We say your role is user. And then we say, given the question, along with the following answers from our company SOP. It's important that you give the question so that ChatGPT can reason about how to respond. If the answers are irrelevant to the question, politely reply you can't find an answer in the company SOP. Then we say question, that's event.text, and that's the original question. So what's your favorite movie? Um, might be a question that goes into Slack. And then the answers comes from this text aggregator. And that text is what came out of Pinecone. That will then get you a response. But we need to do the very final step of moving that response out to Slack. So Slack pops up here and we're going to say, we've already got the channel. We already know we've tested that it's posting correctly. So now we're just going to take this out. And we're going to make this response. So our most recent one is this created completion. And so the way that this comes back from ChatGPT is you go into choices and you go to message and you go to content. So this one says, I'm sorry, but I can't find the answer because it was asking about the movie. We save that. And now we can test everything. Hey, would you have a moment to do a favor for a stranger really quick? If you would go and click the like button below this video, that's going to help this video get to more people, people that are learning about AI that need to make that job change, that need to elevate within their organization. Now, if you are personally enjoying this video and you find it helpful, would you click subscribe? That's going to help me get more content to you to help you become the AI hero in your organization. This is the document that we've broken up and put into the vector database. So as you get ready to demonstrate this to the board, you take a quick look before you run to the boardroom and you're just looking for some things that will impress them. So we know we've got stuff about facility management, biosecurity. And as you read through it, you see feeding, nutrition. There's a lot about sanitization. We have the word sanitize there, but there's, there's a lot of places that talk about, you know, storage requirements. These are all related to sanitization, manure handling. So you go, I think I'm going to demonstrate sanitization so that we can see that we're getting responses that are covering the gamut of this SOP. You rush into the boardroom. You could feel that sweating feeling under your arms. You're not really prepared, but hey, it's 357. You made it in time. You get your computer up like this and you've got the, the, the background here with make.com and then you have the chatbot. The meeting starts, your boss gives you this gushing introduction, you hope that you can live up to it. And so you type in the chatbot, we you, you say, hey guys, we're gonna we're gonna first show you something that summarizes a lot of our documents. Let's do tell me about our sanitation requirements. You click it. You make sure that you have immediately as data arrives. And there we go. It says our sanitation requirements are primarily outlined under. And you notice that it talks about the different sections. And it, it gives you an answer related to each of these sections that came out. You pop into the doc. You show them where all of that came from. And people are starting to open their mouths in surprise. 
they had been quoted that they need to buy these chatbots that cost thousands of dollars a month. And you, the AI hero in the organization, just built this in less than an hour. Now you also want to give them one last wow factor. You say, tell me about your favorite movie. Or maybe you ask a political question or something that it's not allowed to answer. It says, I'm sorry, but the information in the company SOP does not provide an answer. So there you have it. You've built a company internal chatbot that has access to your company's documents and you can throw more data in there. Right now we're using Google Docs, but you could put PDFs, you could put even videos, images, transcripts, anything that you can put into a vector format and then store a metadata to get back the original results. It's all fair game and it's all available to your chatbot. Thanks for watching this video. Would you take just a moment and let me know in the comments what you are wanting to learn about AI? Where do you see your career going? And what are the big questions that you have that I could address in videos that would help you become that hero in your organization?